ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another episode on the Poor Man's GTR. Where today, did that whole thing just go? So today, we're going to be repainting the car. We're going to talk about spray guns used, paint used, what we did differently this time around compared to last time, how you can get a result like this from your garage. You know, you can do all the prep work, you can hire a booth, you can build a booth. We're going to go into a lot of detail in this episode. So we've got seven and a half hours worth of spray painting between the actual camera and the GoPro that was stuck in my head. So I think this is going to be the first episode of the two episodes we're planning on posting in regards to paint. And we're going to get very, very technical on everything we used and everything I learned along the way to hopefully provide the viewers with a little bit of value so they can do it at home. Um, it's not rocket science. It's, uh, it's very simple once, once you get a hang of it and you get it right. That and more to come in this episode and the next episode, so let's have a look at what there is to come. like that little bit of an intro of what there is to come in this episode and the next episode now before we get to painting I'll just give you guys a bit of a backstory on how we actually got to the spray booth so I was gonna build a spray booth the second time around figured we've got all the room in the world in our workshop we've got a beautiful air compressor we've got a decent spray gun we've got all the tools we need for a good paint job so we drew up some plans we almost ordered the pipe we needed to make the uh, spray booth and then I started thinking oh I have to buy fans the fans were okay, a friend was going to lend me some fans to keep the cost down and then literally as I went to buy the pipe that day he goes, what about lighting? And I was like, damn it, I did not think about lighting and then I just pretty much threw the whole project in the bin of building a spray booth because I was going to spray this car and then I'd have to put it away because who knows when the next car is going to come around that I need a spray paint. So with that in mind, um, I posted a story on my Instagram. As you guys know by now, I'm very active on Instagram compared to YouTube posting once a month. Um, but yeah, posted a story on Instagram saying, does anyone have a spray booth we can use or hire? Straight away, Sam from Donnybrook Accident Repair Center reached out and said, look, we'll help you out with the spray booth, we'll help you out with the paint job, and we'll even host you for the weekend. So I definitely couldn't say no to that. And that's what we did.
So with the car in the workshop, we started off by drying the entire car down with some big microfiber drying towels. With all the panels dried, Jaden and I, one of the team members here at Donnybrook Accident Repair Centre, started pulling apart the entire car bit by bit in preparation to have all the parts off the car as that's how we were going to spray it this time round compared to last time. So while Jaden and I were preparing all the panels that are going to get sprayed in the next episode, Sam was busy inside the spray booth making sure that all the panels are nicely cleaned, masked and also securely put on stands to make sure that they don't fall off the stands and also so they're positioned correctly for when we go to spray them, we don't miss any spots like I did last time, for example, the top of the side skirt. So as you can see by the footage, everything is very well masked up and put on the stand securely so it doesn't come off. And as I said before, it's positioned correctly for me not to miss any spots when I go to paint it. So we're getting very, very close to shooting some paint over these parts. But before that, as we always say, preparation is key and there's a little bit more cleaning that needs to be done. So I'm just going over each panel with some wax and grease remover to make sure that everything is nice and clean. And yes, in the previous episodes of me painting the car, I did see the comments and people saying, wear gloves when using some wax and grease remover. I do read the comments, but unfortunately we were on a bit of a time crunch and I totally forgot to do it. We're going to be talking about the paint um, since our camera has overheated. We're using an iPhone. Right here, we have some Spice Hacker waterborne base coat. So, both, both times around, we sprayed the car in two pack or 2K base coat and clear coat. But this time, we used a waterborne base coat as opposed to a solvent base coat we used last time. Now, the, the massive pro of the waterborne base coat is you don't get any reactions. So when I was sanding the car, obviously edges are always the easiest to rub through. I've rubbed through the clear coat, I've rubbed through the blue, and we've gone into the white paint. Which means if I were to spray it in solvent, what I would have to do um, to just make sure that we don't get any reactions, you would grab your gun, you would feather over your blue base coat, and straight away you would just hold it so fresh air comes out and flashes off the paint before spraying the entire panel. Now with waterborne, because it doesn't have thinners in it, you don't have those issues. You just freaking spray the thing and it turns out mint. Now another massive advantage of using waterborne paint is the way it covers, especially the Spice Hacker stuff. I've heard that other brands don't cover as well, but Sam swears by this stuff and I really now know why. I've never used anything like it. For you to be able to get full coverage in one coat is absolutely amazing. And if you're looking at the footage and you're thinking, wow, that's coming on really, really orange peely or peely, don't freak out. That's just the way it goes on. Once the water flashes off and the, the base coat flashes off, it is perfectly flat and you are ready for clear coat. Put it on. 
I'll blow it dry. And that's all, it's got a black line through it as well. That has a black line going through it as well, so it's covered black and white in one and a half. White, all right. It recommends it over grey, so if it's covering that much of white and black, over blue, it's going to be sweet as. Yeah. But no, that seems very nice. Um, do you want me to just yeah. show you on? So it's wet. Wow. I'm going to talk a little bit about the spray gun used this time around compared to last time. So last time we used a DeVilbus GTI Pro or a Pro Lite, I'm not too sure, which in theory is a better spray gun than the Iwata W400 we used this time around. Last time it was a 1.3 millimeter, I think this is called a nozzle, um, and this time it was a 1.4 millimeter. The 1.3 millimeter is better for base coat and clear coat, but again, just like a camera, you can be throwing the best camera in the world. If you don't know how to use it and set it up correctly, you're not going to get great, great results. So this is my personal W400 that dad bought secondhand a very long time ago. We've um, sprayed multiple cars. I sprayed my Sylvia with this. He sprayed a few project cars of his own. Um, so I figured I've got it. Let's use it. So I took this spray gun down with me down to Donnybrook. And Sam had a bit of a play around to see how we can set this gun up. So for anyone that has a W400, what we did is for base coat, we went five and a half turns from, so if you go from zero, we went five and a half turns out for base coat, 
and for clear coat, we went six turns out. I'm pretty sure the fan was set up to fully open. The needle for the air was fully open. And on our air reg, we had two bar of pressure, both for base coat and clear coat. Which means this gun is going to freaking spray like a pressure cleaner. It's just gonna absolutely blast paint out at a fast rate. And this is what I never understood before. You want the gun working for you, you don't wanna work for the gun. So it's better to have more material to come out and move faster than do it slowly. So if you review our old footage, it took four coats to cover the, the white base coat with the blue. simply because the gun was not set up correctly. We had very low pressure. We had no fluid coming out that needle. It was 35 degrees in the spray booth. There was just a lot of factors that were totally wrong. And that was another reason why I stuffed up the paint job the first time round. I know there's a lot of talking, but I'm sure there's gonna be a few people that um, appreciate the information, even though there's so many YouTube channels that teach you this. I'm just sharing it to my own audience. So um, technically, it is one and a half coats, and we are, we are going to elaborate on it in the next episode. Your first coat is your super, super heavy coat that you get full coverage, and then straight away, while the paint is still wet, all you do is you pull the gun back a little bit, a bit, little bit further away from the panel, and you just quickly, you move faster and you just mist it. And the mist falls into the wet paint and then you don't get any more zebra stripes. I'm pretty sure that misting, that half coat is called a drop coat 
or a control coat or however they might call it in the industry. Um, so yeah, how we did this one, first coat super heavy, that half coat super quick, further away from the panel, we got no more stripes and the car's looking good. So moving to the clear coat. What we used is, I'll take a photo of the container, we used Spiceca once again, we diluted it to the ratio that they recommend for the temperature we were at. Obviously the, the spray booth was very well controlled, Sam kept an eye on all the temperatures, made sure that they used their processes, I think it was 12 minutes, uh, for 12 minutes at 60 degrees for the base coat to fully flash off and that makes sure there is no more water on that base coat, it's all flashed off and we are ready for our clear coat two coats of clear coat obviously you put your first coat on not overly heavy you want it to be maybe like an I don't know I don't know what he said maybe like 80% uh, you don't want it to be like dripping off the panel and then give it some time to flash off again check out your manufacturing specifications just read the sheet that is your, your best help whatever sort of brand you are using and then the second coat you just bomb on another freaking layer of clear and you're good to go I'm pretty sure the only time we got a run was on the boot because I accidentally, I think I did three coats. But other than that, I don't think we've got any runs on this car. See how it goes a bit purple and then light and yeah. that's how, that's how base our blue should be. Sick, eh? All right, so we're slowly closing off the video. I know I've done quite a bit of talking. Not everyone's gonna like it, but some people might like it. Uh, hope I've, uh, I don't know if motivated or inspired is the right word, but hopefully somebody has considered to maybe give it a shot themselves. This stuff is not overly hard. You don't need a spray booth. Remember that I sprayed my Sylvia inside a freaking shed. Um, first time ever spray painting a car and it turned out absolutely amazing. If you take your time, do your research, watch a bunch of YouTube videos. As I said, The Gunman Paint Society, there are YouTube channels out there that I highly recommend. I'll put them in the description below so you don't have to go searching. And yeah, once again, a massive thank you goes out to the boys over at Donnybrook Accident Repair Center. Even though it does say Accident Repair Center, truly down deep, they are car enthusiasts. They are about two hours south from where I live. Um, it's not like a weird paid promotion or anything like that. I still paid to hire the spray booth. But if you are considering getting something painted and you're in Western Australia and you want to keep it for a little bit or five, 10 years, you like the thing, the car, the boat, whatever the hell you have, consider making the trip down there. The attention to detail is absolutely next level. There was a lot of things I wasn't happy with this car where I was just going to be like, oh, we'll just throw some paint over it. We don't have the time to fix it. And Sam just kept saying, if you're not happy, You've come this far, let's redo it. For example, the inside of the doors, I did not want to respray them once again. Sam said, respray the doors if you're not happy. So honestly, I could not be happier with how the car has turned out. I think we'll do a bit of a, should we do a bit of a walk around? Let's yeah, go. Let's do a bit of a walk around. Um, obviously there's still a lot of stuff missing on the car, but yeah, we'll just do a bit of a pan. <laughs> If you're wondering why I'm wearing a hat, it's not because of the sun. It's actually because I got a bit of a bit of a buzz cut this time. But yeah, if you like this sort of content, consider subscribing. And we will see you in the next one where we do more exciting things than just talk to a camera.